Thank you all very much for being here today. Um, obviously, the main order of business uh, for us in terms of voting today is the uh, resolution of disapproval that the Democrats are putting forward on the President's declaration of national emergency. Um, we uh, don't support that resolution of disapproval. It's very clear that there is an emergency at the border. Uh, and to speak specifically to that, we've asked uh, Congressman Kinzinger, who has actually just returned. He was deployed at the border. Uh, we've asked uh, Adam to join us this morning so that he can talk about what he saw firsthand uh, at the border. So with that, I will turn it over to Adam. All right. Well, thank you. Um, thanks for all uh, coming out. Congressman Adam Kinzinger from the 16th District of Illinois. Uh, I just returned from a deployment with the Air National Guard to the border. Uh, this was my fourth deployment to the border. Three prior times were in Texas. Those were under President Obama. I think it's important to note that those were not controversial at the time. Uh, the Guard mission on the border has been ongoing for a very long time. Uh, when my friends on the other side of the aisle talk about the use of technology on border control, uh, that is exactly what the National Guard does. It's a force multiplier for Border Patrol. In the case of what I did, uh, we used cameras to see people at night to be able to do that sensor technology and uh, communicate with Border Patrol. Uh, and it's important to note also the Wisconsin governor just pulled my National Guard units from the border because he claims this is not uh, rise to the level of national emergency, even though this has been going on and the Guard's been involved for a very long time. Active duty is on the border hardening the points of entry, which my friends on the other side of the aisle are quick to say are the real problem. And I agree, it's a problem. That's why active duty is down there to help to secure those areas. But I got to tell you why I think this rises to the level of national emergency. If this was just an issue of immigration, I wouldn't think so. Uh, but this is an issue of drugs and human trafficking. I think compassion and border security are not mutually exclusive. In fact, I think they can only exist with each other. I think when you have a secure border, and you tell people to come to the United States the right way, you cut out the drug cartels and the cartel human trafficking. By the way, the cartels in Mexico make a lot of money on trafficking people over the border. And we all know the statistics that a significant number of women that are brought over the border are assaulted and raped in that process. If you tell them to do it the legal way, and you have border security that works, you dry out the cartel's level of funding from human trafficking. Secondarily, drugs are a huge problem coming over the border. A number do come through the ports of entry, but a lot come over the border because we simply don't know how much. My unit's first mission, I wasn't on this specific mission, but they captured somebody that had 70 pounds of methamphetamine on them. Another unit in Arizona that does the same thing captured somebody with a significant amount of fentanyl on them. And a lot of times what we see is when these traffickers or these drug mules get sent that there is border patrol nearby, they drop their loads on the ground and sprint. And as Border Patrol chases them, uh, they either come back later to retrieve those bundles of drugs uh, or they're lost. And in very few cases, the Border Patrol is actually able to make it back and, retri and retrieve those. So I think this is a national emergency. This is an issue of human trafficking, an issue of drugs coming into this country. And I wish that the Democrats could actually work with, uh, with us on this issue. There are areas we're happy to work with the Democrats on, what to do with in my case, what I believe the population that is here. How do we make an immigration system that works? But to deny that there is even a problem on the border is beyond me. Just a year ago, uh, Democrats were quick to talk about border security. And today you have the governor of Wisconsin pulling the National Guard out. By the way, the National Guard likes doing these missions. We understand the importance of these missions. We understand every time an army helicopter takes border patrol into rough terrain that otherwise they'd have to walk two or three miles to get through it, and it's dangerous. And by the time they get to these groups, they're already worn out when these groups run. The army rep understands the importance of what they do. So I'm happy to take any questions about that, but let me just say I went down there neutral on this question, didn't know whether or not I'd support a national emergency, and I came back more convinced probably than anybody that this is the right thing to do. So with that, I'd like to turn it over uh, to our whip, Steve Scalise. I want to first thank Adam Kinzinger for his service to our country, uh, not only as a member of Congress, but even uh, as he serves as a member. He also serves in the National Guard and, uh, and just, uh, I think, explained importantly why this is a national emergency and what we need to do to support the President to make sure that our uh, men and women 
who are at the border risking their lives to keep our country safe have the tools that they need. And that's what this national emergency declaration is all about, is making sure that our Border Patrol agents who have identified the areas where we need to build uh, the wall in the most urgent way, uh, they don't have enough tools. Uh, we've appropriated some money for the president to build more new wall. There are other areas that the president's identified that he can access. Uh, but ultimately, you continue to see uh, problems arise at the border. And for Nancy Pelosi to say that this is not a crisis uh, is completely denying the reality of what's happening at our border. Uh, just the other day, as Nancy Pelosi is going down to the border saying this isn't a crisis, uh, you saw another illegal alien shoot at, police off at a police officer in Napa, in Nancy Pelosi's backyard, right, right near San Francisco. An illegal alien who had come back and forth multiple times was shooting at a police officer, and ultimately, fortunately, the police officer was able to defend herself and take him down. Uh, in Lake Charles, Louisiana, just a few days ago, Somebody who had come to our country illegally and committed sex crimes against a child and served prison time was deported in 2016 and somehow made his way back to the United States. Who knows how many more crimes he committed against children, uh, but because there's no border, there's no physical barrier to control our border, he was able to come back. This happens every single day in America. The president is using the legal tools that are available, including this law that goes back to 1976, which allows him to declare this emergency. Uh, by the way, it's been used dozens of times. Nobody's ever challenged or questioned the constitutionality until now. But at the same time, the president is on strong legal ground to declare this emergency. And uh, when you see the vote today, uh, there will be nowhere near the votes to override a veto. Uh, this law will be, this emergency declaration will be upheld, even if it makes it way, its way through the Senate, which hopefully it doesn't get passed of the Senate, but ultimately uh, we're going to stand with the President in making sure we can secure this border and confront this national crisis that's taking lives every single day. Thank you, Steve. There is a national emergency at the southern border that the Democrats <clears throat> will declare today doesn't exist. You just heard from Adam, Adam Kinzinger. He's been on numerous deployments around the world, Middle East and others. He's been to the border four times deployed, three times under President Obama and now under President Trump. First hand, of anybody that's ever taken a tour of the border that's a member of Congress, I think it's a little different to be able to flying planes doing the aerial uh, surveillance of the border for the last couple weeks. He understands what's at need. If the Democrats say this doesn't exist, it's interesting to me that when you look back in history in 2005, there was a governor of Arizona and a governor of New Mexico, both Democrats. They declared an emergency by their state because the federal government would not act. One went on to become DHS secretary. I think the Democrats have changed. They just now want to oppose something because President Trump supports it. That is not what the American public wants to see. They want to see their president take action. They want to see their Congress and Senate work together. But I guess this week is all about politics. Yesterday, a number of members, we walked over to the Senate, something we don't do very often, but we wanted to watch a vote. Watch a vote on Born Alive Abortion Survive Protection Act. It simply says this. If a child survives an abortion, and is alive should be treated just like any other newborn. Unfortunately, the Democrats said no. There was an opportunity to speak with one voice. We watched what has happened in New York. We watched what has happened in Virginia. We wish we did not have to take this bill up, that there was any place in America that it wouldn't be divided upon. And I think if you look at the latest polling around America, I think they're pretty united around this as well. Democrats continue to refuse to allow it to come up in the House, so every day we ask unanimous consent, and we will do it day after day after day until this bill gets heard. Other than that, we'll take a few questions. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Leader, uh, there are so many Republicans in the Senate who have said that this national emergency is probably illegal, possibly unconstitutional. Why are you on a different page from them? I'm wondering why they're on a different page. Um, the president has the authority to do it. 
I wish some of those, if they think this is the case, maybe they should spend a little time with Adam and go to the border and understand it. The president does have his authority since 1976. There's been more than 60 times presidents have declared emergencies. Um, what we see happening along the border, the amount of drugs, the amount of deaths in America, the human trafficking uh, that's coming across, the overwhelming problem there. So the president has the authority to do it, do and we will uphold them. Do you have any concerns about a Democratic president using this power after setting this precedent? Democratic presidents have used this power because they have the right to use this power. A number of presidents, Republican and Democrats, have used this power for numerous things, and they have the power to do it. Congress had voted to allow it. Yes? Why, why wasn't this a national emergency when Republicans were in control a couple months ago? Well, times change as it moves forward. Uh, when you get the more report of the amount of drugs coming across, you get the more reports of the human trafficking and others. 60,000 people are arrested each month. Um, I think when you have the experts telling you the challenge, I think the President tried to do everything in his power to work with the House and the Senate. Um, I think the President's belief was always that we could come to an agreement to solve this along what the experts have requested. I think at the end of the day, the President has a responsibility um, to make sure it gets protected, and he made the decision. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm curious. Uh, back when Republicans had had the House, and uh, along with the upper chamber, ob obviously, uh, there w there didn't seem to be this enthusiasm for the wall, and there was even a push for even budget re reconciliation uh, to uh, work with the upper chamber to uh, get wall funding. I'm curious as to where this enthusiasm came from now when you don't have the House at this point. Well, what's your definition of enthusiasm when the House passes more than $5 billion to build the wall? That was with the House. So, I mean, I think it's just a um, different definition for you, but uh, no, the House has always been a focus on this within the Republicans. Yes? Last question. Does leadership support amending the National Emergencies Act to rein in future president's authority? I think we'll look at it on case by case. The president has the authority to do this. Uh, we can analyze it and go forward, and we support the president's action. Yes, sir. Do you think, based on your conversations with the administration, that they will, in fact, use this authority to claim some of this military construction money, or do you think they will use the other sources first and that those sources will be sufficient? I think they'll use the other sources first. You know the number of sources that the president has. First, he has the $1.375 billion to build 55 miles. Um, what's interesting to me is that all of Congress came to the conclusion that that should be, that there's a challenge there at the border, why there should be a new barrier built. This is what the experts have told us. He also has the other authority from the two different funding sources um, that will not go into the emergency effect, but then the last portion um, I think that will be the last dollars used, and we'll see how quickly they're able to um, utilize it and build what they need. Yes, ma'am. Actually, I actually have a question for our Congressman Dean. Here. Excellent. We were I know that you have deployed to the border four times, but I want to ask you what's different now on this deployment as to previous deployments under the Obama administration and how that's shaped your view. There's no difference in the mission. Um, now, I, this is my first time to Arizona. It's a very different terrain. Uh, Texas is very flat. Uh, obviously a huge border. I think one of the things people have a hard time conceptualizing is the size of, of a border. I mean, all you have to do is fly in an airliner from Tucson to Houston just and know the whole time you're basically along the border, how fast you're going, how long it takes, and so how big it is. What I noticed in Texas is when I was there under President Obama, a lot of immigration, a lot of illegal immigration, the same issue. We would find multiple groups uh, and only be able to respond to a handful of them. Even with more Border Patrol agents, part of the issue is inserting them and expelling filling them from these, from these operations. Uh, in many cases, coyotes will put one person aside and run with the rest of the group because they know the Border Patrol has to stop and has to process that one person. There's emergency call buttons, by the way, uh, in, in the Arizona desert. So if somebody finds themselves in crisis, they can hit this and we'll come rescue them. That also stops other operations from occurring. There was one operation I was on where I think there were six, a group of six, and the Border Patrol was coming out. The emergency call box was hit. They had to terminate that operation to go respond to that medical emergency or to that hit. By the way, the cartels send young people forward specifically to hit those call boxes sometimes so that they can bring groups across the border. So what I saw was very different terrain. 
Uh, I saw many more situations, and I have the video, and Border Patrol Tucson can release that video, um, where people just drop bundles and run. I saw a lot more drugs this time uh, than I did in the Texas border. Uh, I think it's apples and oranges in terms of numbers because, again, it's hard to terrain-wise. But another important point, I saw uh, one of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle tweet a picture of mountains and say, this is the border wall. A significant amount of the people we found were on these mountains, by the way. And just as maybe it's difficult for them to get over the mountains, by the way, people hike mountains all the time for, for fun, um, it is equally difficult for Border Patrol to get on those mountains, too. I had one situation where a guy was running literally down a mountain. A uh, Black Hawk helicopter with the Border Patrol was tracking him, probably about 50 feet away, and we couldn't get this person, and he got away. That, I guarantee you, was a coyote or a drug runner. So uh, it's pretty bad. Uh, I think there's great people doing great work. Some of the Border Patrol told me that they're disheartened when they hear people basically equate them with stormtroopers because they believe that they're doing a good job for the American people, and I do too. Thanks. Thank you very much.